Hey guys, it's Ted Bogard. Welcome back to the Ted Show. Finally got this dude on the show. The one and only, the Dan Rojas is here today. And we had a lot of buzz about the title of the show, which I was telling Dan what no one taught us. You know, that immediately goes, what don't I know? So uh, great job with that. Dan is a real estate guru, an amazing friend to me and supporter. Uh, you can go to the danrojas.com if you want to find more about him. But please welcome my one and only friend, Dan Rojas. What's up, buddy? I'm sure I'm not your only friend, Ted. My only friend <laughs> named Dan Rojas, that's for sure. No, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, I've been joking with everybody. Well, not joking with everybody, but telling everybody the ongoing <laughs> joke about us trying to link up for this show for the last two two years, right? Yeah. And it, it uh, always something always came up something always changed and it was funny because uh today it almost happened again and i was like no not this time <laughs> the universe was trying to keep us apart or somebody was i'm very excited to have you you do so much in the community you're you have such great energy um i've known you for a from one career to the next or at least from one um agency to the next and so uh before we take a deep dive in that tell them about you give them a little background on the Dan Rojas. So it's funny because a lot of people don't understand, you know, the path that gets us here, right? We never really truly know our end game. Some people do. Some people are like, that's what I'm going to be in life. And, you know, I, I started uh, UCF as an aerospace engineer, fell in love with Central Florida, never left, went into consulting and marketing. And uh, I was actually helping a restaurant group, run a restaurant group here in Central Florida that's all over the state. And kind of kind of got tired of the rat race, right? Kind of got tired of the whole move up and 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 slow slow changes of things and one weekend uh I found out my my sister-in-law, she made uh she made like 100k that year in real estate, right? <laughs> and I was sitting there thinking to myself like, man, I got lucky to make 60,000 this year and I I didn't take a vacation, but yet I saw my sister-in-law take like five that we know of, right? <laughs> and so I was like uh, this, this and she'd been telling me for years. She's like, "You got to do this. You know, so many people. You got to do the real estate thing." And I, I sat there and I was like, "Yeah, but you know, I, I like team sports. I like doing things with people. And, and real estate tends to be, or at least I thought, tend to be like an individual player game, right? An individual sport." Yes. And that weekend, when I saw what she did, I was like, "Monday morning, I woke up clear as rain. I was like, that's it. This is what I'm gonna do." I wrote my resignation letter uh, at the previous company, sent it off in an email, and then my wife wakes up, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, <laughs> yeah. hey. I'm sure she was real happy at that moment. I was like, do you trust me? She's like, yeah, why? I was like, I quit. And she's like, what? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I just sent off my resignation letter, and she's like, what are you going to do? I was like, I'm going to join your sister. I was like, if your sister can do this, I was like, and not not dogging on my sister-in-law. She's fantastic. She's a wonderful human being, part of the story of why I'm here, right? And... I was like, if your sister's capable of this, I was like, I know what kind of work ethic I have. I was like, let's knock this out. I'm going to join your sister. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finally take some advice from her um, in the right manner. And honestly, it's it's been a blessing ever since. To be how final. did you go from? But how does somebody from engineering, not just engineering in general, but aerospace engineering, which to me is so left brain, if you believe all that left brain, right brain stuff to going into marketing and consulting. And that's basically the creative world. What was, what was the, what was that like? How did you, how did you know that you could do that instead of just the engineering? So I like to have fun. Um, I'm not a, I, I guess sometimes I am a funny person when it comes to pranks, but I leave most of the uh, creativity right to Andrew Brooks, one of my business partners, right? And Sean, obviously, he's, <laughs> he's the super creative one. But what ended up happening was I discovered very quickly that I wanted to be the guy on the moon, not the guy in the office or the cubicle, right? So I realized very quickly at UCF that um, basically I was, I was learning from some of the guys in grad school. And I was like, so wait, you, you just do a lot of research, spend a lot of time and effort gathering all this data, and then you put it into a supercomputer and let it run its synopsis and models. And they were like, yeah. And I was like, how long does that take? They're like three or four days. And I was like, yeah, I'm out. I'm not doing this. Like no chance, no chance. <laughs> well, it's just, that is just, it, they're just so completely different. Like my, my, my bachelor's degree is in finance and I hate numbers. Yes, I'm in the lending world, but I don't have to do that part. Uh, so yeah, I understand like you, you go for something. For me, it was somebody told me that's what I should probably do my whole life. And I realized quickly that that, uh, we're blessed, both of us though. We realized early enough that that wasn't really where we wanted 
to be. So talk about your current, because you, I knew you at a different brokerage, but you made a leap. And, you know, EXP is definitely um, one of the most talked about new ventures to come out in the last couple of years. And by new, I mean in our market. Uh, so talk a little bit about the transition there. So when I started, we were at Exit. It was the number one exit brokerage, four years running for the entire state of Florida with Gil Ramos, right? Everybody's heard of Gil, whether they love him or, or they say they love him, right? I mean, he's- We a, all love you, Gil. Don't don't listen a, to Dan. He's a fantastic, and we just love lunch. He's a fantastic human being. I, you know, it's funny because he looks at me like a little carbon copy of himself, maybe a little bit more outspoken, <laughs> but, um, but it's like a chip off the old block, I tell you, when it comes to me and Gil Ramos. But- I will say that I would fi- follow that man into any fire situation, right? But there's times where I got to sit there and analyze my life as well. At exit, we were at a lower split with not many benefits. And um, Andrew Brooks had actually approached me while we were at exit and was like, let's build a team and you know, exit and the rev share that they have. And I was like, not interested. I was like, that's a lot of work, a lot of time and effort. I left an industry where I managed you know, several hundred people at a time. I was like, not, I'm not about it. That's it. I'm, I'm happy with real estate and what I'm making. Let's keep this going. And then Gil kind of approached me with uh, the EXP model. He's like, hey, do you want to help me poke some holes in this model? I was like, oh, I'm all for like destroying somebody else's model. Let's do it. Let's, let's pick it apart. So we took some secret trips out to like Scottsdale, Arizona and Vegas for a few different conferences. And I'll tell you the, the defining moment that I really had when it came to understanding where I wanted to be. Right. And it was not only a bonus and an instant raise right away by switching over, but um, Jake Kinder is 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 a is a man I really model myself after or at least somebody I'm trying to reach in my goals in life. And he's done it all. He's been top producer. He's owned brokerages. He's had top producing teams. He created the National Association of Expert Advisors, which is a coaching company for the top one percent of agents and brokers nationwide. And so definitely somebody to set the, the my sights on and to, to model myself after. And I'll tell you, we were sitting there at a private uh, brunch with him at, at an Airbnb and everybody's asking all these questions. And I'm like, I've already done my research on EXP, but like, let's see if this is true or not. So I had, I had my Wolf of Wall Street moment where I really looked at him and I said, if this is true, show me your bank accounts. And he's just like, oh, I, Danny, I can't show you my, I, my bank account. I said, why not? I said, if it's true and you got nothing to hide, Let's see what you got. And uh, he's like, well, I can't show you the bank accounts. I have several companies that all feed into that, plus my private money. He's like, but I can show you how my rev share at eXp works. So he opens up the little portal that he had at the time and pulls it up and it shows $80,000. And I'm like, that's that's cool. $80,000 a year, though, I can do that in a few transactions. That's nothing to me, man. I was like, what's, what's, what's the real magic behind this? He goes, oh, a year. That's this month. And I was like, that's this month. And he's just like, yeah. And I was like, how long have you been at EXP? He's like, <laughs> two years. I was like, how long have you been in the industry? He's like, 17. And I'm like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. That's it. <laughs> well, you know, we have to see that kind of stuff because you can talk all this ethereal kind of discussion about um, the different ways that EXP is. But the bottom line, you're a bottom line guy, which is where your engineering background probably helps a lot. Um, you want to see it for real not talk all up here. You want to see it. You want to see it on paper in your bank account. Um, I love that you guys made that and you embraced it. You have, you all have embraced it uh, even in the very beginnings. Um, tell us a little bit about the process. You have your own team and then I'm going to get into the topic guys. I have people message me going, I want to know what we don't know. Uh, but you have your own team. So talk about how that works within the organization. So I'll tell you, you know, there's, there, they say that there's five reasons why anybody joins EXP. And I, I don't want to make this a whole EXP thing, but it's just to kind of encompass things because yes, we had a lot of questions about EXP before you went live. Well, so I figured I at least need to address one or two. So, so they say that there's five reasons why they say leads, training, the tech, the support and the family. Right. And although for me, money was obviously a giant factor. Again, I'm following Gil Ramos into the fire, whether we're making money or not. I'm going to trust the process and the system. But what I really didn't discover was how much of a family this really became. Because I, I, Jay Kinder, I mean, he, I won't talk about what his numbers are now because he would probably kill me for saying what he makes monthly now. But for a man that makes what he makes... And for me to be able to call him while I'm in Puerto Rico, because he moved to Puerto Rico um, for uh, economy saving purposes, I should say, um, economic saving purposes. But 
uh, they all did him, Mike Reese, Albie, Gene Frederick, they all did. And I remember I was calling him about something simple, like, Hey, do you have the date when we're opening Puerto Rico? Knowing that he's not, even if he didn't know the date, he's not supposed to give it to me. I, I, I still called him and the man gets you. <laughs> like, it's nothing. He's like, Hey, Danny boy, what's up? And I'm like, Jay, what are you doing? I'm on the Island. He's like, when did you get here? He's like, let's link up for a man that makes what he makes to be so down to earth. That was really what hit me home because I was like, this man will be willing to give me everything he's got his whole playbook all his secrets and all this stuff so that was really a huge factor and that's what we didn't discover in the process yes was the switch a pain in the ass sure we were the guinea pigs we were one of the first largest yeah. groups they had never onboarded 120 agents at once it was right? a big deal now it's like every day there's a hundred a group of 120 <laughs> moving at a time i mean chuck fazio largest independent broker in the in the country of over 800 agents across all his independent brokerages at 100 percent moved almost all of them over in one straight shot. So we were the guinea pigs for everything. So for us, it was a month long process, right? And we were getting antsy because I'm losing money still at exit, right? I'm like, hey, we're losing 10% plus stock, plus rev share, we're losing everything. Um, so when we moved over, it was it was, a, it was a tedious, annoying process. I broke some documents in the state of Florida, which was a really funny story. Um, I changed the logo of all of our documents and transaction desks, not realizing it was for the entire state not just our group. So <laughs> everybody from the panhandle of Miami was handing in documents and said uh -oh. like, the power team brokered by EXP Realty. And I got an earful for that. And I was just like, I yeah. bet you did. I was like, so what had happened was, <laughs> Judy's like, care to explain? I'm like, ah, yeah, I, I royally destroyed that. But um, you know what's funny is I didn't really get school. I thought I was going to get kicked out. I was like, I'm out. They're going to they're, they're gonna kick me out. They were like, how did you pull this off? That's only like a broker permission thing. I was like, I don't know. I sent off an email and it worked. So, um, you know, the cool part is, is that the company's still growing. That's what I really love, yes. right? So we're in the top 0.02% of the company, which is great and all organization-wise, right? And for those that think they know about eXp, that, you know, everyone thinks it's a recruiting company. Well, for it to actually work and everybody to make <laughs> money, we still have to produce. And I'm sorry if my dogs are barking in the background. <laughs> I love it. It's crazy. There, one's, one's in a cone and the other one's just nuts. But um, <laughs> another story for another day. But um, it's a growing company. And what I love about it is that they really do listen to us and they change things as we go. If we have complaints, they hear us. I skipped out on my uh, weekly council with the U.S. president um, to be on this call today because it's every Wednesday at this time. Uh oh, sorry. But, it is what it is. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a great company and it's led by the agents. And we actually, what most people don't know about it is that we have the top, top agent in 47 out of 50 States here in the U S all Amazing. with the agency. So it really is a production company. We're based on it. You know, obviously accolades I could go on for days. You know, we've got icon agents all day. We've got Tia Billis. We've got Julie Marborero who both have been and are currently top 35 under 35, right? We've got Andres and Kelly Espina. We've got a slew of people like a boss and Mac from the alpha team, alpha equity team that just kill it doing 4 million a month. But every one of you, I feel like is the thing, and I'll, I, I promise guys, I'm going to ask him next about what we don't know, but I feel like this is a definitely a compliment. Everybody still has their own individuality and their teams have their own unique setup and roles. And what you and Sean and Andrew do, for example, is completely different than anybody else. I love that ability for you all to be creative. All right. So uh, what no one taught us before I get knocked off or booed off the stage. Um, tell us about that. Why this topic? So you know, in this industry and moving, making the shift, right, from making 40 to 60K a year to making what we make now, right? And what no one taught us is there's a different path, right? And there's, you know, when you when you break that ceiling of, of income, right, the, the door opens up to so many more opportunities, but you have to be in it, right, to win it. And people don't, if you can't break that ceiling, it, it's really difficult to see where it is, right? Because now we're in the playbook of like, okay, now we own several different properties as a group, right? As a team, as an organization, we're making X amount of dollars in Airbnb that we learned from other people at EXP, right? Like Andres and Kelly, right? They opened up their playbook for Airbnb. And what no one taught us along the way is that it doesn't take 45 years for someone to become a millionaire, right? It doesn't, we don't have to play by this game that our parents played, right? My dad is, is still not retired, right? The man's still plugging away as a chemical engineer and it blows my mind because in five years or less, I'll have achieved what I wanted to achieve. And it's not just a financial goal, it's more freedom, right? I didn't realize I had these goals. I didn't realize I wanted a boat. I didn't, I grew up 
in South Florida where all my rich friends all had boats. And I didn't realize, like my sister-in-law just bought one, and I didn't realize the peace that comes with it, right? Um, being able to just go out on a, any given day with my two dogs and my wife and not be bothered by anybody. I mean, obviously, I'm still tethered to my phone for my team and my agent, <laughs> but nobody can physically reach me, right? And and these goals never really appeared because I never thought they were possible financially, right? Being stuck in the in the rat race of things. And there's a level now where it's like I'm opening up an FBA Amazon store where it might not make me like $80,000 like you see on these ads that these people run, but it might make me $3,000 a month, right? And that's some people's salary. And then there's levels to it, right? There's also other businesses you can invest in. I got a friend of mine making five to $10,000 a month in just uh, 3D printing. He runs five printers at all wow. times. Sells little tchotchkes, like little things on Facebook Marketplace. Doesn't even have a website. I'm like, Josh, you don't even have a website. He's like, yeah, it is what it is, 10 grand a month. I'm like, how? It blows my mind, right? But there's there's a level to it because once you have a certain amount of income, then you can invest. But the key is this, is making sure you are surrounded by the right people to gain those opportunities, right? Because some people sit there and they save their life away, like my dad, right? And, and they don't enjoy it along the way because they don't take the opportunities at hand because he wasn't in the right rooms at the right time, right? And what no one taught us is that people tend to think that the people at the top, it's like, oh, they were the super competitor. They were the driven and executed one. They were in a room with other people that were helping them along the way, right? right? They were in a room with the Teddy, Teddy B's, with the Gil Ramoses, with the Bobby Davidovitz's, with the, with the Jay Kinners, with the Todd Schroth, with, with the Veronica Figueroa's, right? Because these are all just... I can text Veronica right now and be like, hey, you didn't share the TED show that I'm on right now. And she'd be like, oops, sorry, let me share it right now. Right? <laughs> You're right. You're and right. I can get on a phone call with the broker of Puerto Rico in two seconds because I, that's the capability of this. But it's it's really the family factor that, that's driven into this. But what no one taught us is this is not an individual sport. At somewhere along the lines, especially here in this country, because I'm Colombian, Everyone was in it for themselves, and and it's become different in the last even just two three years, right? We've become more connected as a nation ever than than ever before, right? Everyone says it's divisive, but I'm like, wait, this I is love it. Point. This is a turning point in life with with this entire country, and people are more connected than ever before. And yes, they might be arguing, but the the conversation's happening, right? The the discussions are happening, whether it's I agree with you or I don't, and it's going to become to a point where it's like, hey, you know what? We're still family and friends, even though we don't agree. But what no one taught us is that there's a different path and you don't have to do the old school way of things. You can do it your way, how you want to do it, right? But there's a key in that, is that the way that really is continued, right? And, and paid back to our community is giving it back and giving this knowledge. Because I wasn't taught this in high school. They don't teach this in, in Florida public or even private education schools, right? They don't wow. teach us. You need to escort yourself as a realtor as soon as you get in the game to save yourself on taxes. They don't tell you that when you buy an investment property that every single one should be in a separate LLC for liability purposes, right? They don't teach us um, that vehicles over 6,000 pounds can be fully deducted from your taxes as a full deductible, right? They do not are, teach that. They don't teach these things, right? They don't teach us investing in crypto and when to when what what buying the short is and all these things. And, and these are things that as we grow need to be shared right they need to be shared with the next generation with our current fellow people you know i found out the other day and this was it broke my heart the other day i found out somebody that lives near me how much they make annually and i was like your kid now works for me <laughs> um i'm gonna have him go uh fly your neighborhoods for me at uh, a reasonable uh price per hour and he's gonna work for me every single weekend because you know they're they're their son wanted a, a very expensive Lego set. And I was like, and I wish somebody had given me an opportunity growing up. And it's not that, not that we didn't have the money. My dad was just very cheap, but I wish somebody had shared <laughs> that. Well, he's an engineer. I know. Yeah. He saved, he saved his way. <laughs> Sorry, his my way. engineer friends. I love you. You're not all cheap. I promise. <laughs> all right. What's the, first of all, I love the advocate. You're, you're an advocate. You're a seed planter you are i get it i love that and i think one of the things that's so cool about how you all have set up how you not only professionally but personally work with people is that you share people love to hoard that detail i can't uh it's gonna ruin me it's not i can promise you what dan's saying is so true you got to share the knowledge you got to share 
that plant those seeds because that is where that whole exponential thing comes in. It's crazy how it works. You can talk law of attraction, faith, whatever your whatever your game is. Trust me, it's all kind of the same as far as it goes when planting the seed is is involved. And you guys do a great job of it. You're always so good to me, and I appreciate that. Say that live on Facebook. I almost said live on TV. <laughs> live from New York. Um, but thank you for that. All right. So what's the best way they can reach you, Dan? How can they find out more about what you do, what you're doing and how they can get involved? So it's funny you mentioned that because some of the topics I had for today was, you know, breeding leaders and how we do it. And we just make sure, like you said, open policy, transparency when it comes to um, what we're doing on a regular basis when it comes to finances or marketing or or anything. Right. Um, so in that note, I they can reach me anything at the Dan Rojas. Right. So the Dan Rojas dot com dot live is my is my Twitch website. I'm a video game nerd, so I stream video games at night. Um, so they can find me there if they're interested Love in gaming. Um, but yeah, thedanrojas.com. Uh, that's my IG, my Facebook, everything is the Dan Rojas. I, I've been fortunate that um, I got a hold of that name at a young age. Even, yeah, my, you did. even my Gmail address is uh, thedanrojas at gmail.com. Um, but all my contact information is just right there. Um, like I said, I'm an open book. We do a lot of free trainings, to be quite honest, because we just want everybody to be successful across the board. Great. So you live it, my friend. We appreciate it. All right. The Dan Rojas. You can reach him at the Dan or anywhere on social media. The Dan Roja, Re Rojas. Yeah, I can't speak today. You're awesome, man. Thanks for all the love and support. You know, I love and appreciate you and your team. Reach out to the Dan Rojas. He's just the same live and in person as he is right here today, just as giving and sac you sacrifice a lot. And we appreciate that. All right. Reach out to Dan. Dan, thank you. We'll see you guys soon.